the boxing, yes, there was money into it, but the kickboxing is what I was trying to build. Mm -hmm. I was trying to build a sport of kickboxing. Hey guys, in this video I talk with Sensei Benny the Jet Orchidas, talking about the early kickboxing days and how he pioneered full contact karate and basically essentially made it into kickboxing. Anyway, it's a fun interview. Make sure to check out the other one I did with him, the other video, uh, when he fought in the what I call the real kumite. That'll be linked in the description below. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please help support the channel. Uh, subscribe, like the video, share the video, and enjoy the interview. Oh, one last thing, by the way. I'm sure you guys heard by now, or you will right now. Unfortunately, Judo Jean LaBelle has passed away August 9th, 2022. It's a real shame. He'll be missed with uh, people in the martial arts world, people in the stuntman community, and a lot of others. So, yeah, rest in peace, Judo Jean LaBelle. I actually wanted to get him on the channel, was hoping to reach out to his people about a year or two ago. Uh, and I think he was having health issues at the time, which may have been one of the reasons why he had declined. But anyway, uh, rest in peace. And Sensei Benny actually trained with Judo Jean LaBelle. They actually trained together. So I'm sure Benny will, uh, Sensei Benny will miss him quite a bit. Back, you know, back when it first started uh, Full Contact Karate. And Full Contact Karate was about, um, I, st I actually, I started, I started fighting in 60, uh, actually 65. Uh, uh, no, actually we're 58. Oh, wow. That was in 95. But when I started fighting, I got to a point where I already had titles in the martial arts and I had a lot of different, you know, I studied uh, nine different systems. And so by the time uh, I started uh, probably about, maybe this was 69, 68, uh, uh, they were uh, the Elvis Presley team. They were looking for a team from the United States to go, you know, to Belgium and all through England and and fight. And so they got all the best they, you know, the uh, fighters that they can bring. And we all got together and we all fought. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up with five of us. I was the smallest and the youngest on the team. And we went. We ended up uh, uh, going to. Uh, Belgium and so fighting and and everybody was talking about this fighter uh, from Belgium, Limens, you know. And uh, I thought, okay. And so I said, well, who's going to fight him? I said, I'll fight him. Mm -hmm. And so they look all looked at me like, okay, I'll be the sacrifice slam. <laughs> and I went out there and I actually uh, I was just too quick. I I beat him and so forth. And uh, so everything started from that point on. And then I, I liked the reality because it was real. And so I started boxing with Baba Chico and, and uh, Randy Chiu. I started working with them in, in boxing. And then I started preparing uh, Baba Chico for his title bouts. So I was his sparring partner and stuff. And so I wanted to turn pro boxing because it was real. There was no, nobody stopping you, nobody. Uh, you know, it was just either you knocked them out or you, you know, or you were knocked out. What are the other? Yeah, quite a bit different than yeah. the point karate tournaments going on back in the day. And so then from that point, my brother asked me, he said, you want to fight? Uh, uh, so you want to fight in this uh, full contact karate uh, to the knockout? And I said, and I won't get disqualified. And they said, it's to the knockout. So I couldn't get that in my head when he said it's to the knockout means, you know, uh, you fight into one person standing. So I went to the World Series of Martial Arts in Hawaii and my brother-in-law, Blinky, and my brother, younger brother, Adam, we all three of us went up there. And so that first day I fought seven times. Wow. And the second day I was supposed to fight four more. Somebody else didn't show. So I ended up fighting uh, Bernice White, which is... Uh, the Marine champion, strong. And so I stopped him. And then I ended up fighting Dana Goodson, my my oldest, my my brother-in-law by Dana Goodson. I told him, hey, if you don't knock him out, you're not gonna win. He's the favorite. So he uh so they uh he ended up going the distance and obviously they didn't want to see me fight. They didn't want me to see me fight my brother-in-law. They wanted me 
to fight Dana Goodson. It's like David and Goliath, right? Mm -hmm. And so I ended up fighting uh, Dana Goodson and I beat him. And so that was my first real international title. And I held that all the way up until uh, 75. And my brother said, um, okay, you're the world champion. I said, well, how can I be the world champion if I didn't go outside the United States? And he says, well, you, if you want to go outside the United States, he said, um, are you, uh, I said, if you want to call me a world champion, yeah. So I ended up, um, they, they brought this one, uh, these two champions from Thailand. And they said, you want to fight Muay Thai? And honest to God, I thought that was his name. I said, I'll fight him. So and so I ended up fighting uh, this champion from uh, Thailand. And the first one, <clears throat> I think Ernest Hart fought the first one, and then he got stopped in the third. And then I was the main event. And so I see this Thai guy doing, he was actually doing his prayer. I had never seen that before. So I started moving to his move, uh, to the music. And the Thai people think I'm making fun of them. Oh. And, and I had, I, I'd never seen it before. No American has ever seen that before. So he came out at me, like shooting an arrow at me. And I smiled and put thumbs up. And he was, uh, he was upset. Sure. And when he came after me, he kicked me in the thighs. I, mean, I had Charlie horses before, but he kicked me in the thigh. My eyes popped out of my forehead. <laughs> I said, what the heck was that? And so I go back in the first round. I tell my brother what I do. He said, kick him back. I said, oh, yeah. So I kicked him so hard and he leg checked me. And I said, oh, that hurt it worse. Oh. So that was my first introductory. So I, I beat him, my first introductory to that type of fighting. And I, so I forgot about the boxing. I said, I want to do this. Mm -hmm. So then I get, then they heard about this American beating the Thai. And so they invited me and five others to Japan. And uh, we fought in Japan and I fought, uh, Suzuki. This is uh, Suzuki you're looking at from Japan. Suzuki is the number one contender for their world kickboxing title over here. He's very anxious to fight Urquides. And I stopped him and I took their title. And as uh, actually, as you can see behind me, this one here was the first, uh, the belt. I have 29 belts, but this wow. belt means the most to me because that was the first one out of Japan. And ever since then, they've been having me come back because they couldn't believe American can beat them. Sure. And so one thing led to another. I kept on going back and the rest is history. So I've been in 52 different countries, believe me. I mean, I can tell you stories about, you know, going, uh, going into these countries. In the beginning, first of all, introducing kickboxing, which most third world countries know about Muay Thai, mm -hmm. eh? but introducing kickboxing to, to these third world countries, uh, let me tell you, they did not like an American going over there and beating them after, I mean, I've, I've, had, I've had many threats and many different things happen to me. Uh, you know, I don't want to go into detail of them, but I'll tell you what, uh, I've, I've got away three times from different families from different countries. And the families are the ones that run the country. Oh, and uh, I don't want to go into yeah, sure. <laughs> other than the fact that um, I, I'm here to talk about it. I'm able to talk about it to this day. So uh, in the fight game, just remember, when you're a champion, you're like a racehorse. Everybody wants to own you. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to own that racehorse because there's big money in the fight game. And to especially going into third world countries, it's, it's like a gladiator and everybody's betting and, but only they take it serious and they take, you know, it, it's like anything else, you know, money is power, money is an organizer and that type of world, you know, it's all about, you know, it's all about the money, follow the money chain and you'll see who's pushing, who's running, who's doing what they're doing. So uh, I became a racehorse and it, that everybody wanted to own. Yeah, that's interesting. Let me ask you this, Sensei Benny. Is there a reason why you didn't just pursue boxing? Because you were really good with your hands. I mean, amazing with the, the feet, but really good with the hands. 
and it seems like it would be safer and more regulated and there's more money involved so is there like a reason you didn't pursue uh professional boxing well first of all i'm a martial artist always have been always will be okay i you know what the fighting part i can do mm -hmm. i'm blessed when it comes to fighting and i don't care if it's in the street i don't care if it's in the ring i don't care i'm you know what i'm good when it comes to pressure i've been threatened many times with uh especially in the street with weapons and so forth i'm not afraid to die so what can they possibly do to me yeah so, that's a good point so the boxing yes there was money into it but the kickboxing is what i was trying to build mm -hmm. i was trying to build a sport of kickboxing true pioneer that's a good point yeah you're a true pioneer and you did so, you did build it that's it so back then everybody's saying uh you know because they were saying full contact karate and they're saying what's full contact karate like you're, you're boxing and you're kicking and you know you're kicking so i said yeah kickboxing and so the word kickboxing came to effect and i started using that and i wrote the first kickboxing book in 78 oh wow and and i went around the world introducing kickboxing to the world hopefully that um i can make it an olympic sport and obviously taekwondo will end up every yeah olympic. yeah a little different sure taekwondo got popular <laughs> When it comes to the fight game in boxing, I am I'm very good. But in kickboxing, I was trying to build a sport, and that's why I put my time, effort, my life into kickboxing and introducing kickboxing to the world. Yeah, that makes sense. And your record speaks for itself. Benny is from Tarzana, California. Has a fantastic fighting record. He's been never been defeated. 99% uh, of his fights are by knockout. I do have to ask, you had so many legends training at the Jet Center back in the day, like Don Wilson. I'm pretty sure Billy Blanks trained there. And then uh, Bill Superfoot Wallace, like all the guys everyone's heard of, right? Now, who do you think, I'm sure you sparred all of them, right, at the gym? Yeah. Who, who did you find to be the most talented uh, fighter that you sparred? All of them. All, all of them. They all had something, you know. Uh, Don Wilson, you know, he kind of mimicked Bill Wallace, mm -hmm. you know, with that front leg and front hand. And Bill Wallace had a, you know, he sword fight. And, but, you know, with, uh, when I worked with uh, Bill Wallace, you know, he was, you know, because his legs, you know, he didn't want anybody to kick him. So he said, I'll, I'll spar with you, but you cannot kick my leg. And I said, why? And he said, I don't like, you know, I don't like getting kicked in the leg. So, so the PKA, he headed the PKA and they made the rules around him. And you know that the PKAs kick above the waist. Sure. I kick the legs only above the waist and you can strike at the head, but everything was above the waist. Mm -hmm. So when I fought PKA, I had to kick above the waist and strike above the waist. But so I started saying, well, you know, what about Muay Thai from around the world? I said, if I want to introduce, you know, kickboxing to the world, I have to be open to everything, leg kicking and so forth. Throw. And when you go to a third world country, there is no rules. Yeah. There is no rules. You go there. And you say, okay, introducing these are the rules in kickboxing. That went out the window. As soon as the bell rang, that was out the window. So I figured you go to a third world country and there is no rules. You introduce the rules and you try to stay with the rules. But when it comes down to it, to me, I'm fighting against opponent. To them, they're fighting against a country. Back yeah. then, mm -hmm. back then, there were... It was like the country against uh, America. And I said, hey, I'm fighting your opponent. I'm fighting your, your, the best you have in your country. I'm fighting an opponent. But I didn't realize that their, their athletes are the backbones of their country. I, you know, to it's me, like Rocky IV, basically. <laughs> so this is us against them. What are you talking about? Come on. Uh, you know what? I. To me, you're going back in the 70s in the beginning, and I'm telling you, when when you go to a third world country, there is no rules. Wow. And I know if I didn't knock my opponent out, 
I know I was not going to win. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, that's why um, a lot of people, I mean, I mean, I've been, you know, one time, uh, I don't want to say where, I was at this country fighting and this, the best that came out, this guy was caught. And I said, man, this guy's too beautiful to hit, man. He's, he looks like a model cut up and this and that. And, but, and he came after me and I hit him with a right cross and I, and he went down, I round kicked him. I just went over his head, just missed his head and he was down. And so people started whistling. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, oh, they like me, okay. And then they start throwing coins. I said, oh, they really like me. But when they were throwing coins, they were hitting and blistering me. And I had to put my towel over my head. They were actually throwing coins at me. And, I, and the whistling was booing me. Wow. I, thought they were, I thought they liked me. Yeah, quite a bit different. <laughs> well, believe me. And they had to get, they had to get a couple of... Uh, you know, uh, guards and stuff like that get around me and take me out and uh, wow. into the dressing room and then escort me into the car and, and take me, make sure. And uh, I thought, wow, they, you know, back then they really take fighting serious. Mm -hmm. To me, I was doing a sport. To me, hey, this is about sportsmanship. This is about, you know, being with the rules and so forth. But Going to a third world country back then, there is no rules. You're and not so popular winning out there while wow, you're making enemies, if anything. So let me ask you this. Who was your most challenging opponent and why? 